Hi guys, welcome to another video from Edmund in Japan. So, as I promised in the last video, we're gonna... At least the intention was to show you guys the first maintenance of the NC750X. Um, this morning when I went to the shop, it was too fast. So, the, the whole process was I, I just passed the keys to the guy. He told me that there's a long queue. Uh, it will take some time, so now I'm kind of walking around the neighborhood. But uh, and he will call me back when he's done. So when it comes to the entire process, it's done in two minutes. So not a lot of materials for taking a video. So what happens is I have taken a few photographs of of the shop and, and stuff like that. You can actually see, watch the people doing the maintenance if you want. Uh, but I decided to just walk around because I've been to the shop before in my previous CBR 650R. Yep, then other than that, I will try to share with you guys the cost of the, the maintenance. Hopefully it's not too expensive. There's a surprise for my motorcycle. So I will share that surprise towards the end of the video. I think that's all for now. So I'll catch up with you guys later. Hi guys, last week I went to the shop for the first uh, maintenance for the bike and I think the overall experience is quite good um, except for they, they forgot to call me after they are done but um, I decided not to take the f take a video af right after the maintenance because partly because it was getting really dark but also because I wanted to show you guys the the top box that I that I finally received. So um, onto that a little bit later. On the so how much did it cost me to go for the first maintenance? I think it's really much cheaper than I expected. So you might be able to see it here. So it's around six thousand. 600 Japanese yen or around 65 US, US dollars and you can see that they actually did quite a lot of work uh, that you can see listed down here and they of course also changed the washer and the drain plug yep so but coming back to here right so um, they did mostly checks which they put here you can see there's no price linked to that so something that they also did which is not mentioned here is they actually cleaned up the bike a little bit as well so if you remember my bike was kind of getting a little bit dirty <laughs> and but they managed to clean it up when i pick it up so so that's really nice so i think overall the service for 65 dollars is i i really have no complaints i i think overall it has been a great experience at honda dream Suginami. So if you are thinking to buy a motorcycle in Japan, you can of course visit visit the shop. But if you are of course outside of Japan, please consider do consider to buy the motorcycle from the official Honda distributor. I think the the general quality service customer service quality that I have seen uh, for Honda dealerships have been quite positive. I have seen some videos in Taiwan. So previously I was riding a CBR 650R. So there's this uh, YouTube channel which I follow in, in, in Taiwan. It seems that the overall experience in Taiwan has been quite awesome as well. 
So today, where am I? So today I'm at uh, Miyogi, Miyogi San, and this is actually the onsen place. So uh, I will leave you guys with some pictures of uh, Miyogi San, as well as the review for the talk box. All right, so that's that's it for now, and I'll catch up with you later. And you might have seen that I have now added the box at the back. So for uh, this time, I will also be covering the installation process of the of the box as well as the review of the box. So hopefully, this gives you an, a perspective of how the box is working. Alright, so let's get to it. So the first thing is how to install the box. So to install the box, uh, it's quite simple. So if you pop this out. What you need to do is really to remove the screws here. One, two, three, four. And once you remove the screw, so these are some plastic caps which you can remove easily, like this. So the good news is, these are the, I believe, six millimeter Allen keys. Or hex keys so you just need to have that it's quite easy to remove and once you remove them what you will do is you will slot in the bars in between the grab rails and the motorcycle so like this you can see it I hope you can see it here and once that's in you put the original screws back put the plastic caps back and that's about it for the other side for this side you just need to be a bit more careful because this I mean the the grab rail is linked to the fuel cap uh, linkage here so you might find it difficult to remove the handlebar rail even though you remove the screws so what you need to do is really to pop this up a little bit and the handlebar rail should be able to be lifted easily for you to slot in the the rack yes correct all right, so once you have done that, then the next thing is really to... So once you have done that, then the next thing you need to do is really to put on the base plate of the shard 48. Um, so normally it's not super well aligned. So what happens is there are some slots uh, which you will be able to adjust and put it in. So make sure it's centered. And once it's centered, then you can screw it down. So it's quite simple to do those. All right, and then after that, then you have the box. So the box, to operate the box is quite simple. So you have this, um, so you have the keys that goes close and open and, and release. Release, as it suggests, is to remove the box from the rack. So I will not do it here today because I'm outside, but um, so once it's here, you don't actually need to have the key to open the box. So what happened, the, the benefits of doing that is that you do not need to then lock it when you are out with the box, right? But of course you can lock it. So what happens is, now with all the key, I can actually open the box just by pushing this button. This handlebar will pop up. You can lift it up and press this. And you can then easily open the, easily open the box. So, the, so with this, I, I think I come to the bad point about this particular box. So the challenging, the, the issue with this box, I, I'm not so sure whether is it because now it's winter. The, the, these plastic things here are very hard. So what happens is the box tends to close by itself. So I, I don't know how to demonstrate. So it's like this. So it closes by itself. So it, it's difficult to keep it open. Uh, and I hope that this gets better after 
after some use uh, or maybe I hope that it gets better in summer when the warm temperature is warmer and it's a little bit looser but uh, anyway it's sometimes a bit too tight so it closes by itself now, now it seems to be okay yep. so this is probably the only negative thing about the motorcycle and now of course you have these clips which is really helpful so you can clip this in to, do, to really tie down the things that you have in the box so that they don't move around yep and I think that's all for the box so overall I think it's really easy to install um, the box is really big it's bigger than I expected and I think it's really a great addition to just the great addition to just that front because what happens is sometimes you might want to have more stuff and you don't really want to put it here because it then obstructs access to the fuel cap so having a real box is really convenient to, to have, still to have easy access to your fuel cap and of course if you still need to mount more stuff you can of course still mount it here I think that's all for me today yeah so let me know if you have any questions about the top box so this is the shot sh48 and then i will try to answer them as much as possible if you like this video please remember to like and subscribe if not i will see you in the next video